write a response until today when I was at work. <laughs> and I had to write it down in my notes because anyone that knows me knows I forget even super things. situation that makes you feel broken, beaten down, exhausted. Maybe this is you struggling with finances um, and not knowing if you're going to make an income, or maybe this is you struggling with a relationship, friendship, or even family issues. Um, you feel as if it's, you feel as if you're literally tried everything, but nothing is getting better. It just seems like it's all getting worse, like life is spiraling. But God knew he needed to put you in that position so he can elevate you and call you higher. Uh, the reason you are in that place, in that position right now in life is because God is knocking at your door. In Revelation, it says God knocks at your door and all you have to do is open it. He is knocking on the door trying to tell you that he's here. Um, he's trying to tell you that he's the comforter, the healer, the redeemer. In, and the one that's going to fill your life with all your desires. Uh, he can fix your broken heart towards your family and friends. Um, he's the one that's going to provide for your finances in that position. And we just have to open the door. Uh, he puts us in that position for us to rely on him. Because when we rely on him, he doesn't let us down. Let's read our verses. The land whither ye go to possess it is a land of hills and valleys, and drinketh the water of the rain of heaven. And the land which the Lord thy God careth for, the eyes of the Lord thy God are always upon it, from the beginning of the year even unto the end. Bring your tithes and offerings cheerfully. Open. 
It's time to give a victorious praise tonight. It's going to break out. There's victory in this house. That door's coming down. That depression, it's over. Spirit of God is in this building tonight. Well, why don't we move quickly to the preaching? Tonight we have a very capable man of God. And I feel like he sleeps in the anointing of the Holy Ghost, eats in the anointing of the Holy Ghost. So why don't we worship as this man of God comes to preach the word? song break out now see some of you right now I'm preaching and you are in a jail but the Bible says that the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty liberty to clap your hands liberty to lift your hands Liberty to give God praise. 
Hey, liberty to do and dance. Liberty to run. Hallelujah. God's your worthy. Hallelujah. I feel the Lord in this place. Brother Soundman, if you can help me out, I'm about to kill my voice and I just got two seconds into this. It's not your fault, it's that I'm going deaf. But the Lord is here and I believe that he wants to do something special. You see, I'm not talking about regular, I need a touch from God, but I'm talking about a supernatural experience that only God can do. I believe that there's some of us here tonight that have been praying some prayers. And you've been trying to reach and trying to bring down some things. But I believe that the Lord is here tonight. Oh, I know. You may look around and say, well, it's just a Friday night. But you'd be surprised. God chose to move and do the deepest times with just 12 disciples around him. And I count tonight and there's more than 12 here. So there's no telling what God can do in this place if you have the faith. Oh, yeah, that's a challenge. I wonder if somebody has faith in this place tonight. You know what? Why don't you just put a down payment of praise for that answered prayer, that thing you've been asking God for for a long time. I feel it in my spirit that that door's about to open for you. That the chains are going to fall off. That the walls are going to come down. Woo. Hallelujah. God, you're worthy. I'm so delighted to be in the house of the Lord with you faithful saints and uh, faithful musicians and faithful young people praying and ushering the power of the Holy Ghost in this place. Amen. Anybody else grateful for that? Thank God. Thank God we do it apostolic around here. Thank God we learn how to praise. Amen. Because you'll be surprised what praise will do. I'm honored to be in this place tonight. I love Bishop. Thank you for asking me to be here and and preach I would not be here if it wasn't for you Bishop I love you I love you some say well that's just cliche nope 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 the Bible says that God chooses men and there was a man sent from God whose name was John that's the order of God is that we have a man of God and I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for God and Bishop I, I, my mind goes back to Walmart when you, we'd sit back there in the sporting goods counter and we'd sit there and talk. And then uh, there came a day when I believe Jeff and Mitch needed some new bikes. I can't remember. And I was so nervous because it was with Sister Alda. And I was like, man, I wish there was somebody else to get these bikes out of this rack. But God was working in those times and those years. And I thank God for that. If you have your Bibles, please go with me to the book of 1 Peter, chapter number 2, verse 9. It's a very familiar portion of Scripture. When you're there, please say amen. The word of God says, but ye are a chosen generation. I quickly want to say that you've been chosen tonight to be in this place. And not just in this place alone, but you are a generation handpicked from God. I'm not just saying that, but that's the reality of it. If you could just get the vision of the way that God sees you, you would realize that there's something great on the inside of you. And the scripture goes on and begins to declare you are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. I know you. some of you are pretty peculiar, but that's not what that scripture is talking about. That scripture's in reference to valuable, 
You are valuable. That ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. I believe tonight that there's some praises that's been hiding in darkness, but God's ready to pull them out if you're willing. One more portion of scripture, Hebrews 13, chapter, or chapter number 13, verse number 15. Hebrews 13 and 15, the word of God says, By him, by who? By Christ. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise unto God sometimes. When you feel like it. When there's money in the bank. When you got them new high heels, sister. When you got that new dress. When the girl said yes, young man, is that what it says? What does it say? Unto God continually. That is the fruit of your lips. See, it's easy to praise God when you feel like it. It's easy to praise God when things are going your way. It's easy to praise God when there's money in the bank and shoes on the feet and clothes in the closet. And food in the refrigerator. But the scripture declares to us to praise him continually. And it gives us direction. That is the fruit of your lips. Giving. Go ahead. What does it say? Thanks to his name. Let us therefore offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of his lips giving thanks to his name just for a few minutes this evening I want to talk to us about this subject prevailing praise prevailing praise I wonder if you could set your Bibles down I wonder if you could lift your hands and before we get into this message I wonder if you could just begin to praise God with me Lord we love you in this house we thank you for this moment of time. Lord, you have ordained this time, God. Lord, before we do anything, we are here to give you praise. Before we go any further, we're here to give you praise and to give you glory. God, you're worthy. We love you. We magnify you. Come on, let it come out of you. Which is the fruit of your lips. It's got to come out of you. I can't praise God for you. You've got to do it for yourself. Come on, that's it. Hallelujah, God, you're worthy. The Bible says, clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Come on, I wonder if there's any young people with the victory in this house. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Before I get started, I want us all to understand that we have an enemy. The Bible says, be sober, be vigilant. If there's one thing you have to understand, that the devil has no mercy. As a matter of fact, he's relentless. He's coming after you. He is a predator and he wants to get you while you're down. You know, sometimes we think being down is depressed, and, but the reality of it is, is being down is when you're carnal, when you don't feel like coming to church, when you don't feel like lifting your hands. That's when the enemy of our souls wants to come in, and what he wants to do is he wants to discourage you. We have to understand in this place, no matter where you're at in life, that we have a common enemy. Be sober. 
be vigilant. That means you can't back up. That means you have to be clear-minded. That means you have to be ready for when that the predator comes. You understand that he's looking for you even though you don't expect it. I'm, I want you to understand this because I believe that God wants you to be victorious. More than myself and more than Bishop, he wants you to have victory. Oh, I believe I'm preaching to the greatest generation that the church has yet to see. Oh, you could say that's cliche, but I believe that this is the generation. The generation that Jesus is coming back in. Oh, you could sit there if you want to, but I believe it. And there's, there's reasons why I believe that. But the reality of it is, is I don't believe that this church is going to grow weak at the, at the coming of the Lord. This church is not going to barely hold on. We're not going to just barely make it. But I've come to tell somebody that God wants you to be victorious. I know there's an enemy, and I know he wants to kick you while you're down. But God wants you to be triumphant. He wants you to be victorious. Because your adversary, the devil, your adversary, my adversary, as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Yeah, he's in a position where he wants to devour those that... I'm going to preach for a minute and then we'll get to this. They, he wants to devour those that want to isolate themselves from the call of God. Isolate themselves from the things of God. Isolate themselves from church. This is one reason I, am, I, am, I don't like social media. Because all of a sudden we got all these, these spiritual preachers on social media. Or all of a sudden they begin to use social media because they think that there's not going to be consequences for what they say because there's not social media police. And so they won't tell you to your face. But all of a sudden they'll go on social media and they'll start blasting you. It may not be directly but indirectly. But I'm telling you, be sober. Be vigilant. Somewhere you've got to realize we've got an adversary and it's not me it's not you it's not our brothers it's not our sisters it's not this pulpit it's not the word of God it's not the things of God so you've got to be prepared even when you don't feel like fighting to fight oh that's good right there if you're taking notes write that down you got to be prepared to fight even when you don't feel like fighting Anybody who's been in a fight, you better be willing to keep swinging even if you can't see. Oh, I was beat up one time when I was just a little guy by a grown adult. And I remember he beat the tar out of me, hit me so hard several times, and I kept standing there. Finally, he put a good one on me and put me on the ground. And I fell back, even hit my head. But I didn't stay there. I sat up, and I looked at him, and I said, is that all you got? And then he kicked me in the face. Boom. You see, there's got to be something on the inside of you. Well, you just got beat up. Oh, yeah. Physically, I got beat up. But there was something on the inside. It didn't matter how bad it looked. That enemy was not big enough. God wants you to be triumphant. God wants you to have the victory. God wants you to move forward. You see, if the enemy could get you preoccupied, preoccupied by all the stuff and all the junk and all the things that are going on in this world, by all the other voices, that's what he's going to try to do. If he could get you worried and depressed, if he could get you in a place where you stop believing, if he could get you in a place where you stop reaching, if he could get you in a place where you stop praying if he could get you in a place where you're just going to give up but the worst place you could be is if you keep your mouth shut somewhere you need to just give God praise oh I understand you. I'm preaching a message to some of us that are faithful but there is something powerful when you begin to give God praise Paul admonishes us 
in Philippians 4 and 8. We know the scripture, it says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely. How you doing, honey? I see you back there. When I'm having a bad day, I think on her. You know what I'm saying? Whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any, what does it say? Praise. Praise. Think on these things. If there be any praise, you have to understand, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. I believe God wants to pull down some strongholds in this place and in this city, and I believe that there is something on the inside of you. Oh, yeah, I'm talking about your praise. Your praise is a weapon from God. When you don't feel like praising God, that's when you should praise God. When you feel like shutting your mouth, that's when you should open your mouth. When you don't know how the future is going to happen, praise God anyway. Oh, yeah, I feel him in this place right now. And I'm not talking about the enemy. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost. For the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Oh, Brother Khan, do you quote that a lot? Oh, yeah, I do. It's in my office on the wall. I look at that, at that scripture every time I'm in my office and in prayer because I understand if we lose the spirit, let's hang out, pop some popcorn, do some soda. Let's get together. Let's punch a card. Let's pat each other on the back. Let's, let's become business owners and, oh, I know. Let's, let's just, let's do these self-help groups. We'll get in these, so there, there's churches right now, they don't even have church anymore. Oh, we go, we kind of get together. They have sanctuaries that are empty, so they go to these, the, 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 the fellowship hall, and all they do is kind of encourage each other. Oh, yeah, how's your business going? It's like a B&I. And none, if some of you may not know what that is, that's business networking where you go out and you shake hands and you try to build your business. That's what churches have become. But I refuse, not on my watch. We need the Spirit of the Lord. Why? Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. My children need liberty. This city needs liberty. If, I'm, if the Lord tarries, my grandbabies are going to need liberty. Hallelujah. You see, the scripture doesn't stop there. It goes on and it says, casting down imaginations. My daddy taught me a valuable lesson. He said, I was, I was talking to him about thoughts. And sometimes, does anybody have any bad thoughts? It's all right. You can lift your hands. Sister, Sister Jessie's like, I don't think bad stuff. I, probably, I believe it. Sister Jess, she, now this ain't confession, y'all. It's all right. This ain't confession. <laughs> thoughts. My daddy taught me a valuable lesson. He said, son, thoughts, especially bad thoughts, are like birds flying over, the, over your head. You can't control those birds. But what you can control is if those birds build a nest or not. Yeah. Oh, we're never going to see revival. Don't let that bird build a nest. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. When you don't know what to do, then just obey. What do you mean? When I say praise him, praise him. When the man of God says pray, pray. When the man of God says pass out some cards, pass out some guards. Because you know what? When you obey, you are taking vengeance on disobedience. All those years I've lost. All the family members I've lost. 
Oh yeah, God wants us to have victory, not just some good fill, huck a buck in an altar, but I'm talking about deliverance of your lost family and friends and neighbors and, and times where you feel like there's not a breakthrough. You see, the power of your praise, when you begin to praise him, it's a weapon. And anybody who's ever yield the weapon, you realize that a weapon is useful for doing one thing, and that is to go against the enemy. As a matter of fact, we have guns. I teach my kids, don't point a gun at anybody. Even fake guns, toy guns. I don't want them to think, even if it's not real, because weapons are designed for something. And your praise is designed for something. Your praise, the thing that's inside of you right now that you may be holding back was designed to give you victory. You see, your praise is not just a weapon, but it's the, the dwelling place of the Most High God. The Bible says, but thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. You see, when God shows up, it does not matter how big the giant is. It doesn't matter how big the mountain may seem. It doesn't matter how strong the addiction you see, when you praise, he begins to show up. That's why we start our services off with prayer and then praise and worship. They are connected because what we are doing is we are preparing for what? Battle. Oh, I don't see that. No, 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 no. It's true. That's why when I look around and some people can't lift their hands, I know that they ain't got the victory. When I look around and people look more confused in the church than understanding that God wants to move in their life, I know they ain't got hope. Oh, God. You see, your praise is connected to the what, how you seek God and where you come from. And I understand that some of us, let me say this real quick. I know that the enemy does not have mercy, but sometimes life doesn't have mercy either. Who said life is fair? Nobody. Sometimes the hand that's dealt to you is just not fair. But if you just get the revelation that when you begin to praise God, it doesn't matter the circumstance. It doesn't matter my past. It doesn't matter what happened to me. It doesn't. All that matters is if I give God praise, I know I'm connecting myself to something that's bigger than I am. And he's got a plan for me. And if I get connected to him, he's going to do something in my life, in my family's life. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 I feel the Holy Ghost. Why don't we clap our hands and give him some praise? You see, when you praise him, he shows up. You got to realize it's not your battle to fight. The battle's the Lord's. Oh, I know some of you want to throw a, a chancla across the church sometimes. I see your look in your eye. But that's not your battle to fight. There's been times in this altar, this very altar, where I prayed God show, show me the spirit so I could yield the javelin and kill it. Don't work like that. I wish it was like that easy, but I know that there are some of us that have the zeal of the Lord where we want to do that. We want to just end it. We want to take care of it. But that's not how the battle is fought. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Prevailing praise brings victory. Prevailing means that it's not going to stop no matter the condition. It's not going to stop no matter what I see. It's not going to stop no matter what I think. It's not going to stop no matter what I'm going through. It's not going to stop no matter how far I've been pushed down. It's not going to stop no matter how many times I've been kicked in the face. It's not going to stop no matter how many times the devil said it could not be done. It's, it's not going to stop no matter how many times they said I was worthless and they said I couldn't do anything. Prevailing praise means I'm going to keep praising him. 
You see, when you look at praise, praise is an action word. Praise is not something that is internally. Praise him on the inside. That is not praise. Praise is not ever defined like that in the Word of God. When you look up praise, it's connected to action. It's connected to you moving. It's connected to you going forward. It's connected to you doing something. It's connected to you running. It's connected to you dancing. Praise is not something where you just sit there. That's a lie from the devil. And unfortunately, that's why a lot of denominal churches are bound up in chains. Because their praise, if they got it, has turned into entertainment. It's not praise unto God. Praise is an action word. It demands movement, a declaration, and your participation. You see, you have to understand there should only be one observing praise. And that is God. That's not you sitting on a pew watching everybody else praise God. The only one who should be observing praise is God. Everybody else should be participating. God, we love you. God, we praise you. You see, praise is an action. When you get a revelation of praise, you can't sit still. Something has to come out. Hallelujah. Praise is an action. Praise is not something you do just because you feel like it. The Old Testament, through the Hebrew language, describes praise in seven primary words. All of these words are correlated and connected to physical action. They are connected to a movement of the body. They are connected to you moving, not sitting there. You know how you kick a devil in his face? You dance. Unto the Lord, not to the beat. Oh, that's good right there. And I like the, I like the beat. Uh-huh. These seven words, the first one I'm going to discuss is Zamar. Zamar is literally a musical or stringed praise. Thank God for Uncle Richie, who is devoted. He's connected himself. I know, Uncle Richie, from the depths of my soul, I want you to understand I've seen you connect yourself to God. In times you probably didn't, but you still let the praise and the anointing and, and, and connect us to God because you have the revelation when he said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men. And I've watched atmospheres changed because of your anointing and your dedication to a Zamar praise, to the commitment of making music unto the Lord. There were times I listened and I thought the keyboard was just going to catch fire. Zamar praise. It's the movement. It's using a string ed- instrument. This is found 41 times, and this is an example found in Psalm, Psalm 33 and 2. Praise the Lord with the harp. Sing unto him with the psaltery and the instrument of ten strings. There's a lot more. Tequila. That's not tequila. I want to clarify. See, Nana, Nana Kathy's always said tequila. No, it's tequila. This is a singing praise. This word's found 57 times. This is when you begin to sing praises unto God. Typically, typically it's connected to the Zamar praise with music, but not always in a congregational singing. And this is an example, Exodus 15, 11, The Bible says, Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? The scripture you may not be familiar with, but this is the song that Moses and Israel sang when they were on the other side of the Red Sea. They understood that God has defeated. You 
See, praise is connected to victory. Praise is connected to moving forward. Praise is connected to prophecy. And this is where they sang as they watched the Egyptians drowned. Another word is Barak. This is found 289 times. Out of all the words of praise that I mentioned, this is the one that is found more. And it's a kneeling praise. It's where you find where somebody humbles themselves before God. And the scripture that I found that I think is one that impacted me when I got the revelation and I preached a message called His Dwelling Place. It's found in 2 Chronicles 6 and 13. For the Bible speaks and says, For Solomon had made a brazen scaffold of five cubits long and five cubits broad, three cubits high, and had set in the midst of the court, and upon it he stood and kneeled down, that's the, the barrack, kneeled down upon his knees before all, all the congregation of Israel, and spread forth his hands towards heaven. He was humbling himself. Now, if you don't know what the context of the scripture is, this is the consecration of the temple of God. After it was built, the man of God, the preacher, committing this house of God, he begins to kneel before everybody in the presence of God, and he begins to pray. Brother Mitch, I believe you took some scriptures out of this prayer that he prayed. And he begins to pray, and it's a wonderful prayer. You need to go read it in this chapter. And after he prayed, this is the place where he prays that God's mercy. You see, when you begin to humble yourself before God, it's not a place of weakness, but it's a powerful place of praise where you begin to connect yourself to God. And he prayed this prayer. And in that prayer, he said, oh, God, remember us. Oh, God, if we sin, we pray your mercy. And I'm paraphrasing. And then he said, when we turn and look at this place, remember us, oh, God. And the Bible says further down, now, when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven. See, if you got the revelation that when you humble yourself before God, the fire will fall. If my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and... Oh yeah, that prayer is a praise. The fire will fall from heaven. You may not need the fire, but the city needs the fire. My family needs the fire. My marriage needs the fire. There are drug addicts. There are marriages that need the fire. They need some people to fall on their knees and praise God so that the fire falls. Oh my God, I feel the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says that when the fire fell, it consumed the burnt offering. One of my scriptures, the sacrifice of praise. God will receive it. And the glory of the Lord filled the house. Oh God, if there's something that you could do for us tonight, is let the glory fill this house, Jesus. Let it fill every vessel here, God. Oh, don't hold back on age. Don't hold back on the way we see ourselves, but fill this house, oh God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Another praise is Yad Yah. Yad Yah. Jah. Yah. It's God. Jehovah. Jah. Yada. And it means hands up. Out praise with your hands lifted. When I was doing my word study, there's so many. This is found 111 times. We'd be here all night, y'all, if I went through all these. Some of you should say, thank God, I'm ready to go eat. Genesis 29, 35, it says, and she conceived again. This is speaking of Leah. And she conceived again and bare a son. And she said, now will I praise the Lord. Now will I, yada, lift my hands. God praise 
See, what you don't realize in the life of Leah is what she was looking for was just love. She was looking for her husband to accept her and to feel like she fit in. And even through this time, she didn't feel fit in. But somewhere inside of her, she said, now I will pray the Lord. I will lift my hand. I don't need his love as long as I got his love. I will praise the Lord. That's why when we say lift your hand, you should get your hands up. You should, yada. You should, you should praise him with your hands. And then it goes on and says, therefore she called his name Judah, which is praise. The praiser. And in the New Testament, it's Judas, which means praises of people. It's a, it's a plurality. So literally, she went. She understood that this is my future. The promise, the blessing is connected to. It's connected to. Oh, this is your participant. It's connected to. Oh, don't let the devil keep your mouth shut. When you give God glory, you are connecting yourself to the promise. Oh, Judah was the promised one. That's the lineage of Jesus Christ. Your praise connects you to the promises of God. Another word is Shabbat. And this is found 11 times. And this is loud shout praise. I like that one. That's when you just, hallelujah. Sometimes this is in direct relation to victory. This is the Shabbat. This is when God said to the nation of Israel, go around the wall seven times. And on the seven times, shout, Shabbat. And all of a sudden when they shouted, the walls came down. Oh, yeah, when you begin to shout, you begin to tear the very air. And the Bible says that the devil is the prince in power of the air. So you begin to share the tear, the, in, the inhabitants of the devil when you praise him with a loud praise. Oh, I like church loud. You know why? Because when we get to heaven, there's only going to be 30 minutes of silence. And then it's going to be loud. It's going to be Shabbat. The other word is Hillel. This is Strong's 1984H. This is found 140 times. Brother Montes, if you could help me out. This is found 140 times. I like H1984. 1984 is a good year. Only if you're old. I, I like it because I was just, I was born in 1983, so it's just one year away. So, you know, it's a good year. It's a good time. It was a good time. 140 times this is found. This is crazy, uninhibited praise. Forgive me because of my braces. That's where you don't hold nothing back. This is the crazy praise. This is rip your tie off. This is the kind of praise where people say he's lost his mind she's lost her mind this is the kind of praise where the devil says there's something wrong with that person this is the kind of praise that will give you instant victory in the presence of your enemy this is the kind of praise if you get a hold of it oh yeah when, you, when the devil thinks he has you yeah. suddenly when you don't feel it you begin to praise God. This praise is connected directly that I found, and it's good. It's, this is the example, 1 Samuel 21 and 13, and the Bible says, and he changed his behavior before them and feigned himself mad, mad in their hands. That's that halal praise. See, halal is... What we say all the time in this church, we say, hallelujah. It's radical praise. 
That's why it's connected to the highest praise. Hallelujah! Oh yeah, it's not something where you just sit back, but you get a hold of crazy praise. Oh yeah. It's where sometimes you've got to change your mannerisms and say, I know the devil kicked me before I walked into the house of God. But I'm on punch. He's never saw this coming. And all of a sudden you've been to scream, Hallelujah! And you just take a, a, a lap around the house of God when you don't feel like it. Yeah, you do it in the face of your enemy. It's a hello praise. It's a crazy praise. It's a red-eyed, kick, kick the devil in the face kind of praise. It's a crazy praise. Bishop says quite frequently, I wish I had some radical halars, if I could use it like that. Crazy people ready to brush hell and say, you can't have them any longer. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. It's a crazy praise. It's a crazy praise. It's one of those praises that when it gets a hold of you, all of a sudden, you wake up a few hours later going, God, what happened? It's a crazy praise. I'm going to have you all sit down. Please be seated. But the praise... That God has been dealing with me is to tada toda toda, which is thanks. It's a testimony praise. It's a praise of thanksgiving. It's a praise of giving thanks. It's a praise of saying, God, thank you. It's a praise of being grateful. Even in times of adversary, it's a praise. The sister Anna, when it feels like you've been beat up and pushed down, I listen to you tonight. I understand where you come from. But even though when you come out of those places, it's a thank you, God. God, thank you. It's a thanksgiving and a testimony. Psalms. 6930 says, I will praise the name of God with the song. See, there's a lot of times where you see these words of praise interwoven. What the other mentions of praise, sometimes we just read the word praise. You don't understand that in the Hebrew language, it's actually connected to other actions. And it says, I will magnify him with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. This Toda, not to da like a like magic trick. I want to clarify. Ta da. Not like that. Toda. Ta ya. Ta ya. Ya. It's, it's mention of God in the same word. This is defined in Strong's as confession, praise, thanksgiving. Give praise to God. Thanksgiving in songs of worship. Thanksgiving in a choir. A sacrifice of thanksgiving. A sacrifice of praise. By Him. You see, by Him. Who's going to give us the strength to give praise? By Him. Therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips. Giving thanks to his name. When I study praise in the New Testament, a lot of the times it's correlated to this kind of praise. A tada, a thanksgiving praise. You see, life has a way. 
I'm almost done. Life and the enemy has a way of taking stuff away from you. Pulling your hopes, dreams, ministry right out of you. But there's something supernatural that begins to happen. And sometimes when all of a sudden you don't know what to do. Oh, I know I switched it up, but I'm just going to preach from my heart. You don't know what to do. It's not going your way. You're not seeing it in your family. The bank account's not looking like it. The plan of God is not being unfolded the way you thought it would be. of sometimes darkness feeling all by yourself there's something supernatural and all of a sudden God I don't see it but I thank you the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5.18 this is the scripture that was on my heart In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God. Even when you don't understand it, give God thanks. Because that's His will for your life. Give God thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. You want to know the will of God? God, I'm not seeing it yet, but I'm going to thank you. What are you talking about? When you don't feel like it, that's prevailing praise. That's prevailing praise. That's when all of a sudden, you don't feel like it, but all of a sudden, you just lift your hands. No matter the news, matter what you heard thank you God you see I know this experience personally my grandma was dying don't worry I believe she's in heaven they had her hooked up to a whole bunch of stuff months before and I went in there and I could tell she was close to death because of all the bags they had on her. She was on life support. And I put my hand on her head and I prayed, God, this is your daughter. If she's not ready to see your face, give her some more time. And God raised her up. She walked out of that hospital. That was right when Alicia was born. She was at the Super 8 motel. I don't know my grandparents like the Super 8. I was like, this is a bad hotel. I don't know if it was price or what, but I'm like, come on. So I wanted her, I wanted to show her Alyssa. So we went. Me and my wife. One brand new baby and grandpa Gabe was there. Put the baby in her hands. She looked at me and she said, You're gonna have a boy. There's a baby in your hands. That's like brand new baby. Enjoy the baby. She prophesied Corbin to me. Six, seven months, I got the phone call. Grandma's sick. You need to go to the hospital. She's not going to make it. I went into that place in the hopelessness except for Grandpa Gabe Grandpa Gabe's like she's going to walk out of this place if you don't know my Grandpa Gabe he's got faith like nobody's business just be careful if he starts talking you're not going to like Grandpa I got to go Grandpa the building's on fire no God's going to put it out 
So we sat there. Family. Family full of backsliders, Bishop. Room full of backsliders. That's all I saw. Lost. Some of those family members down the line, the generations of, of children to grandkids to great-grandkids. The great-grandkids because of the choices of their grandparents. Now homosexuals. I call Bishop. Bishop. Probably remember the phone call. I said, Bishop, I told Grandpa they're gonna, he's got to make a choice. They need to pull the plug and see what happens. And he said, Brother Abe, walk out of that room. Don't stay in that room. Just remember your grandma for the good times. And I obeyed. And I walked out of that room. And they pulled the plug. And I came back into that room. And she was laying there in that bed. A, a, a tada praise. Thanksgiving praise. And all of a sudden, I went. People were crying. And I began to lift my hands. In a hospital full of black sliders and I begin to say thank you Jesus God I give you glory and all of a sudden the atmosphere in that room changed and backsliders talking, started talking in tongues all over that place why because there is power when you begin to thank God I lost my daddy a couple years ago now. I can't believe how fast time's flying. It was a bad day. I sat there for a long time, just me and him, and all I could do was say, thank you, God. <laughs> In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God. I know this is sobering, but I'm trying to connect you to something. Because if you learn to give God thanks, Oh, I'm not just talking about the bad times. The reason I describe the bad times is because when you give God thanks for the past, you can begin to give God thanks for the future. And see, it connects, it connects you to faith. It doesn't matter how loud the giant is. You may not see it. It doesn't matter how many times they said it could not be done. If you just begin to give God thanks, all of a sudden, you begin. God, God is faithful to pay his debts. And when you begin to give God thanks, oh, thank you for the revival, God. Thank you for filling my children with the Holy Ghost, God. Thank you for an outpouring in this city like we've never seen it. You see, in everything, give God thanks. Oh, Brother Condor, but I can't see it. Give him thanks. Brother Condor, I feel like I don't have the victory. Give him thanks. Brother Condor, all I see is giants and walls. Give him thanks. Because it connects you to God. That's prevailing praise in everything. Thanks. Now thanks be to God, which always, which always causes me to triumph in Christ. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but if there's a word from God tonight, it's give thanks. I know you might have heard some news, but just give him thanks. <laughs> you might be staring at giant right in his face. Just give God thanks. <sighs> Thank him for watching the giant fall. Thank him for watching the walls come down. Thank him for the revival. Thank you for letting fish fall from the sky, God. Thank you, Jesus, for letting the fire fall in this altar, God. Thank you, Lord, for stirring the waters of baptism every time we have a service, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for breaking forth in this city, Jesus. Thank you, God, for our new building, God. Thank you. I will bless the Lord at all times 
and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Yeah, that's praise that comes out of darkness. It's praise that comes against times when you... That's prevailing praise. going to get off the ground. Thank you, Jesus. You're never going to have the victory. Thank you, Jesus. Even when you can't see it. Thank you, Jesus. It connects you. It connects you. It connects you. It connects you to the heavenly. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for the breakthroughs in families. Thank you, God, for the restoration of families. Thank you, God, for filling the children with the Holy Ghost. Don't feel like it. Give him thanks. That's prevailing praise. thanks for the Bible says that we know that all things work together for the good it's working for your good even when you don't understand it thank you Jesus even when you feel the pressure thank you Jesus it's working for your good it's working for your good when there was no way. Thank you, Lord, for bringing down the giant. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. It's Thanksgiving, and it's a testimony, for they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony.
Oh, that's it. Praise him. I thank you, Jesus. Let that come out of your mouth. I thank you, Jesus. Remember, speaking the words, formulate it. It frames it in your mind and in your spirit. I thank you, Jesus. My heart is full of thanksgiving, oh God. I thank you for the victory. Speak the word. I praise you, Jesus. I praise you. I worship you, Lord. Let your name be great in my mind right now, Lord. I praise you for your mighty acts, God. I praise you because you're great, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. It is amazing that the whole book of Psalms, which is majority prayers, concludes with praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. That means the tangible. You feel his power. You see his power. The firmament of his power. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. The other night, it was late. My family was in bed and I got a hunkering to play the trumpet. It wasn't at the house, thank God, or I would have woke everybody up. That's my first love is the trumpet. One of the days I'll play it just to let you know I can still do it. So I went to YouTube and I pulled up one of the greatest trumpet soloists that I've ever heard of in the world, Phil Drisco. And I listened to him play this song I just seen Jesus and I just played it over and over and over praise him with the sound of the trumpet praise him with the sultry and harp we don't have harp anymore we have electronic stuff but sounds just as good praise him with the sultry which would be like an organ and a harp praise him with string instruments and organs Praise Him on the high sounding cymbal. Praise Him on the loud sounding cymbal. That don't sound like quiet church to me, brother. Abe. That don't sound like quiet. In fact, that's the difference between David's tabernacle and Moses' tabernacle. Is David had all kinds of music instruments and they sang and they praised God. And then David got so beside himself, he said, Let everything that hath breath just suck in a big a big breath right now to everybody <gasps> and let it out <sighs> if you need a reason to praise God there it is right there let everything that hath breath if you still breathing you ought to be praising him 
He said, well, I got all kinds of problems. That's even a greater reason to praise him. I think we all ought to stand and give him a high praise. Everybody here, let's fill this house. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We praise you. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Brother Abram, for following the Holy Ghost with that wonderful word of God. Praise of thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Let me tell you this. The Bible, he, he quoted it, but we just passed this over. In everything, give him thanks. So well, I don't know what the will of God is. Give him thanks. That's the will of God. Give him thanks in the deepest disappointments of your life. Still God, give God thanks. And in the highest times, the greatest times of your life, give him thanks in everything. Give thanks, for this is the will of God concerning you in Christ Jesus. Praise God. How many of you are going to have a spirit of thanksgiving this weekend? Hallelujah. There are many graduations tonight, tomorrow, and all of that good business. So it's just awesome how many graduates we have. I think Sister uh, Michaela is graduating sister miracle where's sister miracle i know she's around there she is she is graduating sister jada is graduating uh sis, brother and sister shide are graduating from hope core sister jessica is graduating from hope core this year sister susie finished her ged that is an incredible accomplishment who else I miss sister Naomi is graduating this year that's how many years of their life represented here and I want to tell you something that is a big accomplishment we ought to give God thanksgiving for this victory and these people's oh come on let's give him a, a real thanksgiving hallelujah However, in all of that celebration, there's going to be a rocking celebration around here. Sunday morning, Brother Lee Wilson is going to be here. We are going to be rocking this house. You ought to, you ought to invite every Spanish-speaking person here in Pueblo, in Colorado Springs, in Andover, in uh, what's Bland, in Walsenburg, in Trinidad. Everybody that speaks Spanish. They ought to be here Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon, and Sunday night. God is going to do some special things this weekend. I can't wait. Who will grab a handful of Spanish cards and pass them out to everybody? You say, well, I don't speak Spanish. You don't have to, to give them a card. Just give them a card, and when they ask you, what is that in Spanish? Say, I don't know. You can read it. I can't. <laughs> Just come to church. Hallelujah. Uh, praise God. I'm excited about this. I'm excited about what God is doing. So let's remember that. God bless you. Love one another. You are dismissed.